Hey everybody, this is So Heidi, and you're listening to the Successful Fashion Designer Podcast. We all know that the fashion industry is brutally competitive and it takes loads of hard work to get ahead. The problem is that everyone's secretive and tight lipped about their ways. After working as a designer and educator for over a decade, I wanted to help break down those barriers and bring you valuable knowledge from industry experts, and this show is exactly where you'll find that. Whether you're trying to break into the fashion world, make yourself more marketable, launch your own label, or become a successful freelancer, we'll help you get ahead in the cutthroat fashion industry. Hey guys, quick intro before the actual intro. I want to let you know that I recorded the intro with Robin sort of live on the fly as we did this podcast, and the initial idea was to do 10 tips in 10 minutes. Turns out we were way too rushed for time to do that, so it wound up being a little bit longer. So I referenced that a couple times throughout the episode, and we talk about the fact how we're going a little bit long, but here's the thing. This episode type that I'm doing, co-hosting, and collaborating with Robin on It's like a living, breathing thing. It's a really cool idea that she came to me with, and we sort of brainstormed together. So I want to know what you guys think of this episode, what you love, what you hate, what you think could be better, how you think we could do this differently to best help you. The goal of this type of episode is to pick out high-level ideas and examples of patterns and trends that we notice people in the various episodes doing that is helping them get ahead, helping them succeed in their fashion career, and then delivering those in a very easy, understandable way to you. So dive right in and please do let me know what you think about this type of episode. You can email me anytime with your feedback, ideas, constructive critique. Again, I can take it, whatever the type of comments are, I want to hear them. Podcast at SoHeidi.com, S-E-W-H-E-I-D-I.com. All right, let's dive right in now to the real intro for this episode. This is episode 66 of the Successful Fashion Designer Podcast, and today we're doing our second what we started calling Podlet. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the actual name. Um, I am here today with Robin Spady, and we are going to do an abbreviated version of some quick actionable advice, 10 tips in 10 minutes or so for better networking. Um, Robin, welcome to the show. So great to have you here as a co-host again. Can you quickly introduce yourself to everybody out there listening? Absolutely. Thank you, Heidi. Uh, Great to be back. Always fun to talk to you. I'm Robin Spady. I am uh, first and foremost a hand weaver and textile designer, and I'm also the editor of Heddlecraft Magazine. Uh, And I have a couple of decades of... um, experience that I think factors right into the fashion design industry, where we tend to be collaborative and um, share some of the same opportunities. Awesome. I love it. Um, So Robin, you and I do a really good job at nerding out and having these really (laughs) awesome behind the scenes business conversations. And so what we've decided to do at... um, And in such a way to kind of help point people in the right direction and point out some of these brilliant insights that we see coming up over and over in all the podcast interviews is to do these little mini episodes. Um, So as I mentioned before, we're going to go through this. We have a specific list of 10 tips for better networking. Um, Let's dive right in. Before we get started, I'm going to say one thing, and that is that networking can happen anywhere. It doesn't matter where you live. You don't have to live in New York City. Um... You can do it online. You can create relationships anywhere in the world thanks to technology. So so I'd like to just preface the conversation with that. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I live in a town of less than 200 people, and I'm two and a half hours from a, a city of any substantial size. Awesome. And it doesn't slow me down a bit. Yeah. The other thing that we talked about a little bit before we hit record was that networks don't happen overnight. So it takes time. You know, these are relationships. These are friendships. These are um, conversations you're having. And this does take time to build. So be patient with it and um, just keep meeting people and having conversations. And we're going to tell you exactly how to do that now. Um, So we'll start with number one, which is ways you can leverage online networking sites like Google Plus, LinkedIn, Instagram, all sorts of things. So do you want to start with an example for that one first? Well, one of the one of the examples, um, because at first um, I've been on LinkedIn for probably I don't know six years or so. I didn't really think that it was going to produce that much, but about uh, two three times a year, I get somebody that finds me through LinkedIn because they were linked in with somebody else, and I'm a degree off. Um, I'm a, a second level contact or whatever they call it, 
And one of the most important people that I ever was able to establish contact with found me through LinkedIn. And this is after I'd spent two and a half years trying to get this person to respond to my emails and figure out how to get in touch with this person. She found me. Um, it. And it was just such a shock. And even today, I got an email from LinkedIn that um, I, I'd had 10 viewings and I could go out and I could look at who's looking at my profile. And I went, wow, I've got some fashion designers that are looking at my profile. Um, and I'm not necessarily a fashion designer per se, but I had come across fashion opportunities for fashion designers. And so this is where, who can I look for? And you know, Google Plus I've started to use. I'm trying to use Instagram more often. At a certain point, you only have so many hours in the day. Yeah, and you can only pay attention to so much. So, you know, for me, I'm on LinkedIn. I don't pay much attention to it, to be totally blunt. I've, I've been hanging out a little more on Instagram, and that's been a great space for me personally. Um, it's a place where I just genuinely engage with people. I leave comments. Um, I make friends. I have conversations, whether that's via direct message. And I do it all in just a very organic, genuine way, saying congratulations. What a beautiful design. That's so cool. Um, and I've made some really great industry friends on there who I've still never met in real life. But we pass around job and freelance opportunities. They ping me and say, hey, you know, uh, this fell in my lap. It's not the right fit for me. Are you interested? And so this is a way where, you know, just these genuine ongoing conversations on social media platforms can create this network where people refer different things to you and you pass around opportunities and it's a great way to to connect and, and make new friends. Mm -hmm. so. Exactly. Yeah, it, and, and it does work. It's something, it's a kind of, a, it's a slow, gentle thing. Yeah. I don't think you have to actively work it, but leverage it. Yeah, and be genuine when you're, when you're on there having conversations. Exactly. Um, awesome. Number two, make a conscious decision to regularly reach out to your network. Um, so I'll start with this one. Um, a recent episode, episode 60 with Carla Stout. She, this was just in her nature, but she did something so simple that created a situation for her where jobs would just fall in her lap. And um, she essentially became friends with a few recruiters who were essential to her career trajectory. And instead of just reaching out to the recruiters when she needed something like a job, she reached out to them periodically just to say hello, how are things going, to give her, them an update on what she was up to, um, to let them know she had moved to a new city and just accepted a new job, just to kind of keep them in the loop. And it did so many things for her. It, one, just made them feel like she was just, you know, having a conversation, saying hello, asking how they were, letting them know how she was doing. And it also showed that she was continuing to grow her career as she was updating them on what she was working on and what she was doing. As a result, those recruiters turned around. And whenever they had a new opportunity that was a good match, she was the first person they called. And that was really what drove her, at this point, 15-year career trajectory. Exactly. Exactly. I, and, you know, this is, just, you know, making this decision to I'm going to contact somebody. I think if, if somebody needs a little more guidance, um, what I tell people is, you know, pick one day of the week, like, and I always tell people Tuesdays because mm -hmm. people are coming off their weekend on Monday and, and gearing up as you get later in the week for the weekend. You know, just say on Tuesday every week, I'm going to email somebody that I haven't seen for a while that I went to fashion design school with that I worked with, um, any, anybody that maybe you've come across and just say, I just wanted to follow up. I saw you got a promotion. I saw you did this. Just wanted to, to tell you that I thought it was great. Um, or, you know, and if somebody says, well, it's Tuesday, I'm drawing a blank. Feel free to, you know, send me an email and just tell me what you're working on. Tell me about, I'm working on this, this line um, and it's designed uh, for this kind of customer. And, just let me know because we hear about opportunities. And I think too often um, people try to network when they need something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people go, oh, my gosh, I just got laid off or I just got out of fashion design school or I just quit my job or something. And then people go, oh, I'm going to start calling people I know. And there are people that I, that I have in my network that every time I see them on caller ID or in my inbox, I just go, Oh, what do they want now? <laughs> uh, and why, why? And I, and I have told a couple of them, you know, I only hear from you when you want something. Yeah. Don't be that person. I really love to know what you're doing. In the <laughs> um, and so I really think, but make a conscious decision and just 
reach out and just ping people and just say hi i just wanted to say hi find out what you were up to um or if you know what they are up to and you just want to say congratulations i think that was great it goes a long way it sure does that 30 seconds it takes to write that email goes very 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 far um all right let's dive into number three which is diversify your network um so yep. I'm going to share a specific strategy that one of the uh, one of the older interviews, episode 29, um, Maylee Bingham shared, um, and she did something so simple, but it's proven to be really, really great. She started initiating lunch or drinks with friends at work who were in sort of neighboring departments so not right in her specific fashion design department but Mm -hmm. departments that her her department worked with um and she would initiate friendships in those departments because you never know who is just like one arm's length away from you what that did was she would go out to lunch with them she would learn a little bit more about their job and how her work impacted their their work she wound up learning ways she could do her job better, which would make their job easier. And it just created this amazing circle of, wow, she's a joy to work with. Not only does she care to you know, do her job better so that it makes my job better, um, you now get to understand the departments a little bit better and you get to know someone, just an arm's reach outside of you because you never know who they're going to know at the next job and the next job and the next job. And all of her jobs have essentially come through referrals and friends and, and networks of people that she's met within the industry. And the other thing that, you know, I would um, add to that in diversifying uh, your network is, you know, actively just go places, um, gallery openings, Mm -hmm. um, you know, anything like that where there are, you know, other creative professionals, because sometimes when you're, you're at an event with uh, artists, architects, interior designers are amazing, um, is you're not in competition with them. But they also can appreciate, you know, the skill and the abilities that you bring. And we're, in some respect, all interconnected. And sometimes you'll find yourself being a bigger fish in a smaller pond when you're one of the only, if not the only, fashion designer amongst a group of people. And then at the same time, and and Heidi, you and I have talked um, about, we have slightly different uh, appreciations for business cards. (laughs) need to have business cards on you all the time what you really want is you want to get people's business cards i tell people i i really think people should leave titles off of business cards because if i go in and i'm with a group of interior designers i may want to to really convey more of my background in textile design than something else um and just some Sometimes nobody, you know, and you're not talking about nobody ever got hired because of a business card. So they, they're, they're a tool. They're not the end all be all and don't spend a lot of money on them either. Boy, I've seen some really spendy business cards. Don't spend a lot of money or a lot of time. Um, I could probably go on a 10 minute conversation with you about business cards, which we won't do, but I appreciate the way that you, you coined that. You and I have different appreciations for business cards. That's hysterical. Um, But but you also want to get them and then. And when and when you're diversifying your network and you get somebody's you know business card, send them an email and say it was great meeting you. I really enjoyed our conversation about X, Y, and Z, um, and and make that that was your 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 point of the week to manage your network. Yes, uh, it's so simple, which leads right into number four: follow up, follow through, and say thank you. Um, yes. You know. When you do meet that person, when you do have that conversation, whether you think they have something to offer you or not, whether you need something or not, that is not the goal. You just follow up and say thank you. Um, I recently held my successful fashion designer event in New York. We had an amazing turnout. Maybe, I think probably about 75 people showed up throughout the whole night. It was phenomenal. I think I had maybe three or four people follow up and say thank you, which is a pretty small number out of a room of 75. Now, I wasn't there to expect everybody to say thank you. (laughs) But one really amazing woman followed up with me as well as my husband, who was there taking photos and engaging 
engaging and he loves chatting with everyone in my audience. He's he's kind of like that big brother kind of guy. He loves giving support and advice and guidance. And um, one amazing woman named Kayla followed up with both he and I via Instagram direct message. And she just said, hey, thank you so much. It was an awesome party. I just wanted to, you know, say it was so nice to meet you. Just a genuine thank you. That's all it took. Um, in turn, I invited her on the podcast. She'll be – we'll be doing an interview in a, in a few months, I think. Um, and so you just – you know, she didn't go into that with the expectation of I'm going to get something out of this. Um, yeah. But saying those thank yous and doing that follow-up after you meet someone is so valuable. And I'm telling you, like, less than 10% of people do it. Well, and that was because, I, you know, you had uh, uh, David – was it uh, Rusan? Russin. Russin. Uh, that in his podcast, he's a he's a – you know, what pattern designer um, in Greeley, Colorado, as I recall. Yep. And he mentioned a number of times, there's all this opportunity and people are not following up on it. They're not getting back. And when you get these opportunities, yeah, it can knock the wind out of you to say, wow, I have to contact this person that somebody may have given me as a reference. Um, but do it because I, I, uh, frequently follow up with people that I want you to write for my magazine. There's a boutique that's looking for new designers. There's a, a show of independent fashion designers coming up and they're doing a fashion show and they're looking for people to participate. And if I hear from 50% of these people back, and this is usually after I've made contact with them and mm-hmm. they say, wow, that sounds great. That sounds exciting. And I tell them what the next step is and sort of leave the ball in their court. Less than 50%. And, and I think I'm being really generous on that. And when you follow up and they say, well, I've just gotten really busy or I forgot or, you know, I just, I don't know. I just, it just didn't feel comfortable. And you're thinking, well, but you missed an opportunity potentially. And why would I make that effort again? And then the people that do follow up and you go, wow, you follow through, you, you, you took this opportunity, may not have been a fit. That gallery or the boutique may not have been the right fit for you, but tell me why, because then the next time I can maybe, you know, aim something a little better in your direction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I've I've sent people freelance referrals and I know it's turned into work and I never hear back from them. They don't thank me um, or I send them referrals and it doesn't turn into work and that's OK, um, but they still don't thank me. And so then next time I have a freelance opportunity to give to someone, it's that's not the person I'm going to give it to. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, just a simple 20 second email to say thank you goes really, really far. And, and, um, you, and I've had I had somebody recently that they were really excited about um uh, an opportunity I was offering them um, and I'm not offering asking these things for free um, and about a week later she emailed me back and said you know what I just think I overcommitted myself and I really don't think this is a good opportunity for me and I appreciated that as opposed right. to right as opposed to her just ghosting you that's all it takes is an explanation and letting me know what happened yeah very exactly. simple all right Robin we're not doing so good on our 10 minutes um, but that's okay we'll keep scooting through here <laughs> um, oh, number five um be the kind of person you want to work with um so i'm going to use another example from my recent event in new york and i think a lot of times you need to kind of flip your mindset um i I put this out in my newsletter and i got pretty good reaction from this a lot of people this was an eye-opener for them i had a conversation with a woman who was working in a role as an assistant designer but she was doing the job of a a junior designer and so there was a disconnect between her responsibilities and her pay versus the title of of the work that she was actually doing and she was very frustrated by this and she said to me you know how do I go into an interview to try to get my next job stepping up the ladder as a junior designer or even an associate designer when I've been doing that workload for so long but my former employer was taking advantage of me and making me do the work of a, of a higher level designer but paying me a lower level. And I go, you got to flip your mindset. You can't position this as they were taking advantage of me and they didn't give me the pay and the title. You have to go into it as I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to get responsibilities above my role and it more advanced than the role that I was assigned. And I got the opportunity to learn about everything that goes into an associate or a junior level designer, you know, whatever the tier above you is, um, and to get to work on projects uh, and get the experience to understand how this type of role works and what type of opportunity, what type of responsibilities come with that. And so I think it's a matter of flipping your script. Um, 
and and spinning things in a positive light instead of that person that's always complaining and frustrated and cranky that they're being taken advantage of. And I, I know it's a fine line between abuse in the fashion industry because that does happen. Um, but I do think flipping your mindset on this can go really far and, and, and just presenting yourself as, as a person who appreciates opportunities to grow in advance. Yep. No, and it, it's true. I, I know not all opportunities fit everybody. And sometimes you can just say the environment wasn't a good fit mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to, you know, they treated me like crap. <laughs> <laughs> right. If, if you believe that you're, you're underemployed, uh, stomping around complaining and telling everyone that your work is beneath you isn't going to get you anywhere. No, it's sure not. Yeah. It's sure not. Yeah. Um, all right. Scooting on to number six, be collaborative and make a point to work with others. Mm -hmm. What do you have to share on this? I think you have a pretty specific example. This one, even though these are people really outside of uh, the folks that you may be working with directly. Um, and this is where, you know, you may have, uh, you know, a museum nearby. You may have um, a theater that is looking for volunteers. You may, you know, increasing your network and, and working with others when all of a sudden it's like, wow, this person's coming to our aid and they're going that extra mile. Um, I think is huge. Um, and I think it, it's, again, it's, it's one way of expanding your network beyond the people that you're working with. Yeah. Um, no, that's a brilliant uh, piece of advice. And, and I think something good too, just to kind of get outside of your box and get outside of your comfort zone. Um, I want to share a pretty specific example in the workplace um, from an interview that I've recorded. It's, it won't be released yet as of this as of the recording of this episode, but in episode 72, which will be coming up in, in a little bit, um, I interviewed this amazing guy by the name of Kirby, and he works at Puma. Um, he's been there for two and a half years. His internship turned into a temp job, turned into a full-time job. And I asked him what he had done differently when he was an intern to then land a temp job and then land a permanent job when he saw a lot of other interns come and go and not get full-time placement. And he said, you know, when I had downtime or when I just didn't have enough work to do, uh, I asked my coworkers, the senior designers, the design directors, I asked them, what could I do? What can I help on? What can I take off of your plate? And he said, in the meantime, he was watching these other interns. I mean, my jaw dropped when he told me this, sitting and having two and a half hour lunch breaks in the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? What? Clearly, they did not get, you know, promoted to another job and are now not working at Puma for two and a half years. Um, but he said, I just, you know, I was collaborative and I asked other people what I could help them with. What, how could I help them meet deadlines? If someone was out of town, he would, you know, offer to have their emails forwarded to him and answer those. So I think you just, you know, as much as people complain about being overworked in this industry, you are not going to get ahead by not offering to lend in a helping hand um, and asking how you can help other people within your company or outside of your company. And that's why I mentioned to you on, on uh, the homepage for the Fast Studio in Portland, Oregon, mm -hmm. uh, fine website. I love the quote on their homepage that it's never crowded along the extra mile. Mm -hmm. Tribute that to Wayne Dyer. And I just, I love that because it isn't crowded along the extra mile. Um, and that can that can take you a long way. Most people do not go that extra mile. Exactly. Yeah. Um, all right. Up next, number seven, six degrees of separation. Or fewer degrees of separation. <laughs> or two degrees. Yeah. <laughs> what do you have to share for this one? Well, this was one, um, th and this was um, kind of as a, as a young uh, creative professional starting out on my own. My husband um, worked for a large Seattle-based coffee company, and one of the people that he worked with, uh, this woman I saw you know, quite often and was chatting with her and told her one day, yeah, I'd really like to be able to do this and this, because I was talking about getting my business underway. And the next time I saw her, she all of a sudden starts telling me about her partner, and she said, well, she's a stylist in Los Angeles and does film and commercials, and she can get you that work. And I'm, I was just awestruck that it was like really i wouldn't think somebody that works for a large coffee company to be that closely connected with uh being a fashion stylist in los angeles yeah but sometimes other people are just one or two degrees of separation away from a phenomenal opportunity and i've known people that a friend of mine's a sports writer and he's got contacts with active wear companies 
um, I, you know, you just go, oh, I sometimes don't put all that together. And so some of it is, again, the people that you know, your family, your friends, the friends of your friends, listen to what they do. And sometimes you just need to kind of tell them, this is a goal I have, this is an objective. And maybe they have something for you to follow up on. Yeah, you never know who knows who. Um, and I think just being having your ears open when you have those conversations can go so, so far, which on the term on the note of listening, we'll get to that in a minute. That's number 10. Um, I won't skip ahead. <laughs> um, all right. Number eight, follow up with someone for the sake of following up, even if you don't know them. And especially if you don't expect anything from them. Oh, I love this one. Don't well, expect that, things. You and I met. This is how you and I met. I just, yes. just fell in love with your podcast. And as a former you know, business consultant, I went to business school and um, had a lot of experience. And I kept thinking every single podcast you have, Heidi, is full of some wonderful business advice. And I just... You know, I had posted on, on the iTunes page, but then I sent you an email saying, this is wonderful. And I just pointed out some very specific things and some specific podcasts that this is really wonderful because it's helping fill the void that I think many fashion design schools are unable to fill or not filling at the present time. And, you know, sort of the rest is history. Yeah. Um, you know, and I started communicating and now things are we're working on things together. Yeah, we're working on some really cool stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I love this. I think it just comes back to, you know, something that people have said a lot on the podcast is, you know, it's not this word networking, which I know we all use and we all understand what that means, but it's friendships and it's relationships and it's conversations that you're having. Um, and it kind of comes back to this, like, don't reach out just when you need something. Um, follow up for the sake of following up, whether it's to say thank you or congratulations or nice job. And even if you don't know them, I mean, I I still love getting emails from people that just reach out to say thank you and, and reply to the things I send out. Uh, you know, it doesn't, don't overthink this. It doesn't have to be any complex thing. Just follow up and let them know you liked the article that they wrote. I, I got some great podcast interviews from people just reading their article following them saying hey that was a really cool article you have a really interesting perspective turned into an interview you know now we follow each other on instagram we comment you know we've we've become friends we're having conversations and these things lead places like the six degrees of separation thing you just never know where something's going to lead well and people may not remember what you did or said but they're going to remember how you made them feel yep that's one where people if if you just reach out people like i think recognition and i think one of, the, one of the most important things I ever learned to say to people was, um, I hope you can help me. And when I call somebody and say, you know, I, I'm calling the airline and I want a seat change. And I ask the person, introduce myself and then say, I hope you can help me. Because I think people like feeling validated. Yeah. And so I've done something. Tell me. With no, again, no expectation that we're going to do anything. Yeah. The no expectation thing is huge. Um, all right. I love it. Um, number nine, be specific when you ask for something or help and do your homework. Um, I just have to throw out the, can you give me advice line? That one just drives me bonkers. Um, it's a very overwhelming question to, to have someone ask, and I'm not going to lie. You could listen to any podcast interview and I'm sure I ask it. Um, you know, but it's often usually like much later in the conversation after we've gotten to know each other quite a bit, the blanket statement, just, can you give me advice is it's just a tough one. So, um, you know, do your homework, do some research, um, I, I point out the research and the homework one because I can't tell you how many people I hear from who clearly did not even use the search feature on the internet called Google uh, <laughs> that I think we all are aware of to do a tiny bit of research, even 10 minutes to try to answer their question um, or even searching my site. Uh, for some support or for some resources and come asking me for specific help. And I'm like, I'm not, you know, I can't, I'm not here to deliver everything on a silver platter and neither are the other people out there that you're asking for help. Um, so when you do ask for help, make sure you've done your research and be very specific in what you're asking for. Um, I know you've got some, speaking of specific, you've got some specific examples on this. Well, this is, I, I, and I, you know, in one of your recent episodes, Jackie Ayers mentioned that, that, you know, when you, when you contact somebody and I, fully agree with Jackie with 
if you call me, if you email me and you ask me something specific and you inter introduce yourself, if you tell me something so you understand maybe what I do, because um, I've had people call me and they said, oh, and I looked at your website and I know everything you do. And I'm going, what are you talking about? Because they're talking about something that I don't do. Um, just a little bit of homework. Um, and then ask me, you know, if you say I'm looking for sources for um, uh, sustainable fabric that I can buy in low minimum quantities. Um, Brilliantly worded specific question. I love that. <laughs> open that dialogue up because if I feel that, that you've been prepared, I think a lot of people are going to really open up more to you and you can go back and build on that bit by bit. If you say, can I, can I spend 30 minutes and come by and show you some of my designs and get feedback on it? Mm -hmm. uh, and then when they give you time, uh, thank them. Yeah. And yes, thank them. <laughs> yeah, because they'll be more apt to give you more time later. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Um, I'll also just tag on to the, I'm trying to find suppliers with sustainable fabrics and low minimums. Um, whenever I ask someone for advice, I always like to show them what I've done to try to answer the question already. So I might add on to that. I've looked at this company, this company, and this company. Here's what I found so far. I think this might be a good match, but I'm not sure. Um, so if you, and, and it takes a little bit more time, but here's the thing, you've got to put the time in to do that research, to show the person that you're well prepared. Um, if you come to me with, with a thing like that, with your question, and then showing me what you've done and asking me, you know, what I think of this or which option you're leaning towards or what you have questions about, oh my gosh, that's brilliant. I'm actually part of a, a Facebook group, um, that requires you to word your question that way. It requires you to word a very specific question and then you have to explain what you've done to try to solve it or what the options are you think to solve it and the pros and the cons of each one. And it's trained people to like really think about their question before they post it. So think about that when you're reaching out to someone for help. Well, I had the, this person that ultimately uh, followed up with me via LinkedIn after I tried to get a hold of her for two and a half years. I had a very specific uh question or need and what was sp originally supposed to be getting together for 30 minutes i ended up in her personal home all day long and i mean i'm just sitting here thinking oh my god i'm on the floor with this person that i've been in awe of for years and years and years yeah um and it, it built from there it's brilliant um, so. i love it i love it um all right this goes right into our last one number uh 10 Listen, listen a lot. Um, listen I, more. Listen more. Yeah. You know, the, the old saying, um, two ears, one mouth, use them accordingly. <laughs> um, but, you know. And then this is, as you and I chatted about this um, on occasion, really the whole listening thing is embedded in all of these other things so that when you're meeting somebody new listen to what they do i think sometimes we get so overwhelmed with wanting to make sure that we do our brain dump on them mm -hmm. but, but wow if you get that back especially if this is somebody that you think could be a really good connection um but you know how do you diversify your network how do you get through sort of these six degrees of separation and find out the friends of the friends and what they can do and so much of that is just listening to what they say and people i think really appreciate when they're being listened to. Yeah. Um, I'll share a quick quote that um, someone shared on Instagram is, most people do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply. And I think the intent to understand, um, you know, this is interesting because it's something that doing the podcast has taught me a lot about. I mean, I, I, I get really hyper-focused when I do the interviews and I listen to every single word and I'm really trying to understand what the person is saying. And I, I just flip my mind into a curious mode. I actually don't even have to do it because I, I'm naturally curious. But I listen to what they say and I want to understand better. I want to understand more. So I ask questions and I engage. And I'm like, wait, what, what do you mean by that? Oh, wait, that must have been really how did that make you feel that must have been amazing um so this this well it's a validation that you are listening to them yeah versus the intent to reply where you yeah. just say something back and you share oh yeah i had an experience like that too or you you all of a sudden flip the conversation back to you and there's a time and place when that's appropriate you know you can be relatable um yeah listening 
does not mean that you're not talking. Right. You know, just, just being quiet. And if somebody is listening to me or I think they are trying to portray them listening to me, except they're on their phone. Ah, uh, yes. What, what, unless you're writing down notes or something, <laughs> boy, make eye contact with the person. Yeah. Uh, and, and listen, and you're the way you're also describing it, which is ask these questions in response that show how you're listening, that yeah. you are connecting, that you're not just sitting here in the back of your mind going, if I just let this person talk in the next three minutes, um, that would be enough. I check it off the box. Yeah. Um, I want to throw in one more point that you and I chatted about before we hit record. And I know we've, we've done a terrible job at this 10 minute thing, um, <laughs> which is okay. Um, now we know for next time. Again, you guys, this is something we're experimenting with a uh, very sort of candid conversation here. But, um, you know, we talked a lot about uh, thanking people. And when you ask for advice, be specific and then following up. Um, and I think this comes back full circle back to the listening thing. And I want to throw out there, um, I made the comment to you, you know, I, I, I started doing the mailbag episode because I get a lot of emails in my inbox asking for advice, asking for suggestions, ideas, you know, what do you think about this exact situation I'm in? And so I launched the mailbag episode to answer listener questions. And I, I spend, you know, three to five minutes answering various questions on the episodes. And I then even go to the extent to email the people to let them know that that their question has been answered on the podcast. And would you believe I hear back with a thank you or a, hey, I took your advice and here's what I'm doing to implement it. I probably hear back from one in five people, which kind of kills me. Well, um, it, it I does. Don't... <laughs> and you're not asking people to genuflect and, and, you know, ingratiate you with, you know, hours and hours of praise or something. No. But, you know, nobody ever gets themselves into trouble with good manners yeah. and that's one of the things about networking is be well mannered be respectful um and and reciprocate because what makes you feel good probably makes other people feel good when when it goes the other way yeah. like like let me let me understand what you're doing let me find interest in that um and not get so consumed in what i'm doing but what are you doing? Um, and we find synergy there. And also just even, you know, whether it's listening to what they're doing or even listening to their advice that they're giving you, implementing it on some level and then following back up to say thank you. You know, I think the listening goes in. It's it's a bi-directional thing. It's both listening to what they're working on to better understand them and to be more curious and engage with them, but then also listening and taking what they you know, the resources and the energy they put towards helping you implementing that and then following up that then kind of takes the whole networking relationship conversation thing full circle uh, and really makes people want to help you more. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what is, is it's not a one time thing. A, a lot of what we're doing in business, there's never a one shot and you've got it all taken care of. Um, it's like people, um, you know, if, if you ever saw one ad for Coca-Cola, you probably never think of Coca-Cola again. You, you know, it, it's that consistency. It's that persistence. And it's not, you're not trying to annoy people when you're networking, but you're just trying to make these, these regular connections so that when you need to leverage it, and for example, you find yourself that your company's cut back and you, you're out of a job, that you have people that you've been working with that may have familiarity with, with you beyond um you know uh gee i need a job yeah 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 I love it, Robin. Um, well, listen, you listen, you guys. Uh, we again, we butchered this ten minute thing. Um, it's a new thing we're playing around with. Um, you guys out there listening, we would love to hear from you. Our goal with this, and this is something Robin and I have been talking about a lot behind the scenes, is to just help point out some of these subtle behaviors and things that we notice in people in general in life and in the podcast who who do things. Sometimes they do it consciously. Sometimes they do it subconsciously. It's just part of their nature or character that are really helping push them ahead. And so what we're trying to do is dissect those things and deliver them to you in very tangible ways 
Um, so we're playing with this, you know, sort of podlet mini episode idea. This one wound up not being so mini. Uh, but I think everything we said was really valuable. We would love to hear your feedback, your ideas, your thoughts, what you like, what you hate, what you want more of, how this could be better for you. Um, we promise to listen and implement that advice and change it going forward. Um, this is kind of a living, breathing episode structure that we're playing around with. Um, you guys can email me anytime, podcast at soheidi, dot com for feedback on that. Um, Robin, what do you think? Any, any last words that you want to share? No, I think I'm just hoping that people know the only reason that, that you and I want to do this is to try to ferret out, you know, those, those business lessons that might be very subtle and that can make a huge difference huge. in success. Um, and you know, there are people, some of the best people I've ever worked with, you really had to study them and realize, wow, they're doing these things like listening and going out of their way. Um, and, you know, making that extra, you know, mile, um, and complimenting people, you know, I saw you did this, and just some of these things that I've worked with with people that you just go, wow, I could really learn a lot by learning from other people, and I think we're just trying to do it kind of in a more condensed uh, delivery. Yeah, I love it. Awesome. As always, so much fun to chat with you. Um, thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of the Successful Fashion Designer Podcast. If you know someone who you think would enjoy the show, all you have to do is share it with them. Hey, there's one of your Tuesday networking things, right? Email someone an episode of the show. And let them know that you might you think they might find it interesting. Check that yeah. off your list for the week. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. So great to chat with you. Thank you, Heidi. <laughs> <laughs>